Old Dr. Disrespect is back for another round with his batch two of Black Steel. Has the gaming legend learned a thing or two from his first round? Or should he stick to gaming? Let's find out. My name is TJ Gamble and you've stumbled into Bruzel. In this video, we're gonna try batch two of Dr. Disrespect's Black Steel and we're gonna compare it to batch one. Guy Beam, the creator of the gaming persona Dr. Disrespect, came out with this celebrity whiskey brand Black Steel back in November. Now, six months later, the Call of Duty legend came with the second batch. Now the first batch sold out in minutes and I thought it was actually pretty good. So it's no surprise that batch two sold out just as fast. Now we got a lot of flack for our review of this whiskey from some of the whiskey tube community. A lot of folks thought we were way too generous with it. Now I thought it had a lot of things going for it. A lot of things I'm looking for in a whiskey. It had a great viscosity, that kind of thickness to give you a really nice mouthfeel to distribute those flavors, to give it some complexity. It was a little youthful and like it wasn't the most robust whiskey in the world, but as far as celebrity releases go, I thought it was pretty good. But let's give it a try against batch two here and see if that's any better. Now you may remember from the first video on Black Steel that Marianne Eves, the first female master distiller since Prohibition was the one behind the first batch of Black Steel. And so a lot of folks were thinking that this was sourced from Castle and Key, which is where she had been distilling at the time uh, and she stayed on for the second batch so if this is indeed castle and key which there's a strong likelihood it is there's a strong likelihood that this too is castle and key that's just speculation they don't put that on the bottle so we are unsure where this is sourced from and don't know if it's just a second release of this or if it's completely different whiskey they got from somewhere else but we're going to see here in just a second there are a couple of improvements from the first batch worth mentioning and first the price has dropped which honestly is a welcome surprise and it's not much it goes from 60 $54.99 to $59.99. And that was some of the feedback we got in that we weren't really taking price into consideration, but it was most definitely not a $65 bottle when compared to $65 bottles you can get just in the general public. And the second improvement is the ABV. Now most whiskey drinkers, myself included, like the whiskey to be a little bit of a higher proof. Uh, and it's gotta be even better of a whiskey for me to enjoy it than 100, 110, 120 proof. The first batch of Black Steel came in at 93 proof, which was a step up from the Castle and Key releases that they had dropped under that label. But the second batch is actually coming in at exactly 100 proof. And it's cheaper. Like, it, that makes no sense to me. I don't know if it's just because this was the first one and they were unsure how it would go that they charged $5 more when this one is actually a higher proof. Like, usually the higher the proof goes, the more the whiskey costs. Good for us, $5 cheaper and 100 proof is right in my range of where I like whiskey. So let's see what the bottle tells us. On the front, an emblem that reads Black Steel, born of strong, wild-blooded craft. And then Black Steel in big lettering. Small batch Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, bottled into steel by Black Steel Spirits Co. On the back, Black Steel is a bourbon born in Kentucky, raised by wild-blooded masters of craft, an absurdly smooth, beautifully ridiculous bourbon that balances true whiskey tradition with eccentric innovation. Black Steel is distilled in the heart of bourbon country, aged in barrels held in one of the world's most respective rick houses and exclusively released in small batches. It's a delectable, body-trembling profile that whispers in your ear, we belong together. Crack the seal and take it for a ride. You finally found the untraditional, traditional bourbon you've been searching for. I think that's pretty much the same as the last bottle. All right, let's look at the distiller's notes. On the nose, sweet toasted oak, hints of citrus and vanilla. The taste, warm baking spice and caramel with a lingering finish. We're gonna get back to that bourbon video here in just a second, but first I wanted to tell you about today's sponsor and that's Bright Cellars. Whiskey folks, can be snobbish, a little bit elitist. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, you realize we like to troll folks like that because we think this is not some exclusive country club that we could all be members and have a good time. And it should just be about enjoying it the way you wanna enjoy it. So what we're doing for whiskey, Bright Cellars is doing for wine. To sign up, all you need to do is take a quick seven question quiz and Bright Cellar pairs you with wine custom tailored to your taste. You could choose from 12 different plan options with over a hundred varieties 
sourced from over 80 different wine regions. Best of all, each box comes with these neat little wine education cards that gives you useful information like tasting notes, suggested pairings, and the proper serving temperature. It's like having your own little wine brusel on a card. And I do wanna try this pleasure principle right here. I don't have any wine glasses, so we are going to go with Glen Cairns, and Jill's gonna come in and help me with this one right here. There you go, you get your own glass. I don't wanna drink after you, that's disgusting. Oh, yeah. Let's look at the card on this one. This one is full-bodied, suppled, and dry with notes of cherry, blackberry, vanilla, and cedar. And it comes from California, and it's supposed to be served at 60 to 65 degrees. That one smells so good. That is delicious. But I don't think I'm at a point where I pick up a ton of tasting notes on wine. It's not like whiskey for me. It's oh. good or it's bad. Like that's where I'm at with wine. And, and it's probably where a lot of y'all are at with whiskey. If you're just getting started, good or bad are fantastic tasting notes. And this one definitely leans on the good it's side. pretty much my tasting notes. What do you think of this wine? This is delicious. Do you pick up cherry and blackberry and mm. a Lots little bit? dark fruit. I mean, once somebody says it, I never would have said that. Maybe cherry, obviously, on a red wine, yeah, but it's really good. I never would have picked up a lot of those notes. But it's fantastic. I know Jill's gonna take all these wines upstairs and That's I'm never gonna, gonna see them again. But before we do that, we take our notes, we go back to Bright Seller's website, we give them that information and our next box will be better curated. So they learn yeah. over time and our suggestions get better and better. So let's make sure we do that yeah, that's so before cool. you get rid of all these. But I wanna thank Bright Sellers for giving y'all your first six bottle subscription box, normally $150 for just 60 bucks. Click the link in the description, take the quiz, seven easy questions and get started today. I'm loving this wine, but let's get back to that bourbon video. So enough talking, let's get to drinking. I'm gonna bring Jill in to help me with this one and get a second opinion on Black Steel batch number two. And then she's gonna pour me a blind and I'm gonna try batch one and batch two back to back. It smells nice. There's nothing like that really jumps out at me as good. There's also nothing off-putting. Like I'm really sensitive to shortcuts. You use rapid aging or oak staves or anything like that. I tend to not like it. Decent mouthfeel, nice oakiness to it. Nothing to hear that blows me away, but just a really nice sipping bourbon. Like if you're a super bourbon nerd, there's nothing here that you're gonna be like, okay, that's exclusive. I mean, do you agree with that? Yeah, it's, it's good though. It's, it's like really good. I wouldn't call it exceptional, but I would call it really good. I think for Dr. Disrespect's market, like folks that are really into gaming, I would assume tend to skew a little younger. And so for that audience that's maybe just getting into bourbon, I think this is gonna be a good introduction. Like this is a really good starter bourbon, I, I think. I think most whiskey nerds, most of the whiskey tubers out there, their big problem with it is, is this is a great introduction to bourbon. This is not a great introductory bourbon price. This is 60 something dollars versus 25 bucks okay, for a wild yeah. turkey 101. Right. This is a nice bourbon, good sipping bourbon, middle of the road. I get a lot of spice. I would so, almost think this would lead more toward a rye. It does have a little bit of spiciness to it. I get a lot of um, spice. Which usually just means it has more rye in it. It. Like I said, I don't know if this one, how it compares to that. Let's, I mean, we could try it and then we'll blind it and see which one I like better. I will say on this first one, I get more vanilla. I don't get as much of the spice. I may like the second one better just because I like the spicy in it. Well, it's definitely, the flavors are a little more intense. It's got yeah. more oakiness to it. You know, it just feels like it's an older just whiskey. Just a little bit more. And it could just be the proof. It could be the proof improvement on it. I think I'll easily be able to tell the difference between those in a blind for sure. They're very different. This one's lighter. I get a bit more citrus. It does does feel a little more youthful, like it's just not as well rounded. The uh, second batch, I think it's $5 cheaper and to me is more toward what I'm looking for. That 100 proof, it's got a little more oakiness to it. I usually want a little more like fruit forward bourbon, so this is not like one that I would just go chasing. It is more that baking spice, that spiciness you get with a little yeah. more rye. It does have a very long finish to it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up. We're working on a new Brusel score. I'm not gonna give it a score. We're working on it. We're trying to get the app going. You see, we haven't really done any bourbon reviews much on here. The score just wasn't working. It was complicated. So I'm not going to give it a score other than I like, it. I like it. Do I like it for a $60 bottle? It's a lot of money for that. You know, if that helps you relate to one of your favorite characters yeah. on the internet, cool. I could it's totally not... see someone playing a game and sipping this. And that's probably what this is intended for. You're it not is, gonna sit yeah. there and sip a 140 
Koi Hill while you're playing games. When you're not a distiller with a big operation, you don't have economies of scale, it's really hard to get whiskey out for less than that 60 bucks. Like it's just not, you gotta buy barrels, you gotta figure stuff out. I don't know how many bottles they actually released of this at this point, but it's still a really small batch. Like honestly, most of celebrities, most of these, if somebody with a following like him would have put out a whiskey and charged 120, $150 for it, they would have sold them all out just as fast. And it could have been a really nice cash grab. And it seems like with him bringing the price down, to me, improving the whiskey, actually trying to, to build a brand out of this, which is, is respectable to me. I'm a fan. All right, Black Steel, one and two. Let's look at the color on them right off the bat here. Looks like A is a bit darker. That's a hefty pour. I know, it's I didn't so mean much that. of a pour. Like I, I went to swirl that it and heavy. it's like, I, that's even heavy for me. I like heavy pours, that's even heavy for me. Oh, that's batch one for sure. Light, I get a little more citrus notes on it. It's good from that perspective, but again, kind of that, that grain forwardness. A is batch two, which is a completely different experience. Much more kind of baking spices and caramel. Like they, they describe that. Their description of that is actually really, really solid. This one definitely has a little more polish around the edges and it's really starting to approach a nice whiskey. I think it needs a little more time to be that next level that maybe he's going for on those, but I like A a lot better. A is, a is considerably better than B to me. Uh, but we're not gonna rank it. The last ranking was a disaster. We, this ended up above Eagle Rare because of some weird fluke in our rating system. That's not better than Eagle Rare, okay? This scrapped the whole rating. This broke my broke channel. Broke the ratings. It broke my channel. So uh, Dr. Disrespect lowers it five bucks and puts out a better whiskey. You think you're right? You didn't even ask me if you were right. Oh, I'm, I'm 100%. That is batch two right there. I'll quit. Like, I'll give the channel away if I'm wrong on that. Is, am I right? Of course, yeah. So you agree that A is considerably better than B? Yes. I really think it has like a, I think it's leaning A little more rye. rye. Well, I mean, you could have high rye bourbons. A lot I of high think rye that's bourbons. a high rye bourbon. Hey, if you like videos like this or you're into whiskey, like maybe you're coming over from the Dr. Disrespect two-time champion crew, you like videos like this, maybe consider subscribing if you would. We also give bonus reviews. We're starting to roll those out over on Patreon, so you can join us. Should be a link in the description for all of that if you want to, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.